Guys, welcome to the next guide. This will be the guide Human Against Orc. And in this guide we will feature especially the infamous World Elite Sky push against Orc, which will feature an Archmage, a Beastmaster, a lot of summons, casters, and last but not least, a lot of towers. This push is designed to kill you early on, and for that reason we will show you or I will show you how to do it what to expect from this kind of push and what you have to keep in mind in order to be successful and for that reason we will directly jump into the game this game that i chose here is fly against infi on turtle rock um, infi one of the human players from china that won the last wca and i think he also won the last wec so this is the guy who is yeah, the champion of everything at the moment, the best human player in the world and maybe the best player in the world, at least when it comes down to tournament wins here from the last year. He won all the major tournaments. Infi, of course, one of the guys who trained with Sky back in the days in World Elite, so he is super familiar with this strategy and for that reason I thought an Infi game would be perfect. And then I was thinking about opponents and what kind of opponent would have been better than Fly. Fly is also one of the old school orc players, maybe the best or I would say for sure the best orc in the world when it comes down to the remaining players we have. This guy is just crazy, he's all over the place, he got this crazy blade master control and overall he's just a great player and also a great person in general. I met him in China and I really enjoyed like talking to him and also having some fun over there so it's amazing. For that reason I chose these two players and I found a game on Turtle Rock here. This replay will feature the Sky Tower Rush. It will be not the I go to your members and crush you completely right after I get the Beastmaster out. It will be a little bit delayed. But let's talk about Turtle Rock for a second. Turtle Rock is this map with four spawning positions. You can have cross pos uh, close positions here as well as cross positions that we see in this replay. There's an also a different opportunity that you have this long kind of cross position here where you are located like on the opposite side of the map and at, at the exact same spawn but this time it will be cross position and this is perfect for this kind of push because it will give you a lot of space to get your creeping done there's not a lot of action early on you don't have to pull malicious all the time so we will jump into the game and see how it goes from here. Infi, the blue human player from China against the red orc player from China fly here both of them will go for easy normal um, normal builds and this is also what you have to do for this guy push if you are the human player just do your normal altar, barracks, one farm keep your workers coming, keep your peasants uh, sending to the gold mine the first of them to get the five people in gold so that the gold will be mined most efficiently then after finishing the first farm here you construct the second farm and with the third farm here we will see a full wall off so the whole main base here is closed you cannot pass here here is it closed with the farm so you cannot pass here the second farm will go down here so this area is also closed and with the third farm everything is like accordingly to Infi's plan so far he will close off the entire base so that your workers cannot be harassed and also your tech buildings can be built in a safe location we have enough space here for an Arcan Sanctum and we will have enough space here after clearing out the forest there should be enough space to create the second Arcan Sanctum that we will need for this kind of push so we will keep the workers coming and the first footman as well we see one footman going down here being produced in the barracks additional forces the peasants are being constructed perfectly lining up with the second farm and after finishing the second farm and building your uh, second footman here you construct the third farm to get the whole close base there on the other side we see fly getting his blade master typical kind of thing that all player would go for blade master and barracks here with the grunt second orc borough in place as well as the voodoo launch skipping the 20th peon here, 20 supplied peon for a while so that he can get the voodoo launch a little bit earlier both of the players scouted the close position we have this on the normal turtle rock map on w3 arena you will all only have cross position but we will continue with the view on the human player so you have different 
options here when it comes down to creeping. You can go for the green camp in front of your main base with two, or two to four militias. Four militias will clear this like super fast. Two militias it will take a little bit longer, especially when it's close position. Then you should bring more militias to clear this a little bit faster. If it's cross you don't need that many, but he's chosen four to clear the first camp. So from that you will get half the level, like 100 uh, experience points out of the 200 that you need for a level up. And then you can think about, okay, will I go for the orange spot or will I go for the other green spot on the opposite, opposite side of the map. And personally, if you go for the first green camp and if you scout with one of your footmen, we can see it here, he's scouting to this position, you can be really safe by creeping that, this here. Or when you start creeping and you don't go for the green spot, you go for the orange one here, you can also use this here. Also with four to six militias to creep that super fast and get the item as well as the experience from that. But I would like to point out the green spot. So we will keep with the infi creep route and I would highly recommend you if you have the same spawning positions to do the exact same thing. Just try it out for yourself and most of the time it should work really well. So first of all there will be a gauntlet of August strength for him. Most of the orc players won't run over to you. They want to pimp your, their blade martyrs blade masters as hard as they can and for that reason they will try to get as many items early on as they possibly can blade master with a glove of haste will go to the shop sell his tp get a circlet yeah there you go gets the circlet and creeps the orgamagri so infi maybe knows that there will be a really passive game to be expected from fly but in the same time the fly is not completely aware. He used the grunt to scout the uh, to creep the first camp, so he is absolutely not catching Infi's movement. We can see his vision here. He sees one footman going down here, but his blade master is busy creeping there, so there's absolutely no creep jack intended. And Infi will get this green camp and will be level 2 after that. So what's important to point out at this point is when you creep the green camp in front of your main base, as well as the green camp here, this opens up a timing window where you already start hacking. As soon as you have the amount of wood that you need, you just start hacking. And the water elemental costs you crept this here with four militias. The water elemental is talking about the damage and it will not die because it's like four militias killed that's that spot off like super fast. So the water elemental still got 200 HP. And what Infi does and what is really smart is creeping this here as well as sending over four peasants here. Uh, as malicious with the water elemental that he got from early on and is creeping this. So keep in mind, tag as soon as you have the amount of number and when you started the tag you can do this with the remaining water elemental, send this over to this green camp on the other side of the map with four malicious and creep it. So we will keep that in mind. He's creeping this camp with four malicious. You can see how easy it is with the water element. He will tank up all the damage. Then the big turtle is gone. Bam, and he's creeping the green turtles, you can just waypoint it this after this and then send them back home. In the meantime he gets the other green camp done for 300 HP uh, experience points already for the Archmage on a good way to level 3. In the main base, this is also important after tacking and when you have the resources while you produce more footmen all the time. You need up to 5 or 6 footmen in total. Don't build any more, 5 or 6 will be completely fine. Then you construct the lumber mill like one third of the tech is done or let's say like 20 to 25 percent you start your lumber mill to have the amount of lumber to support all the stuff that you want to do and also you can see he's also freeing here he's killing the the trees or he's just harvesting lumber and he will have the space for an arcane sanctum here and he constructs the lumber mill close to the gold mine so he's not taking the space that he will open up here by lumbering, by getting the lumber from that one. So he will have space here most likely for an Arcan Sanctum as well as here. And constructing your tier 2 buildings inside your main base can be really important because when the Orc is applying pressure to your front, uh, to the front of your main base and you don't have the space to build them in the back, you just fall behind because you cannot construct them and you're just falling behind and all the tacking, all the tacking units. But Infi here is going for some more creeping. He knows that the Blade Master still not figured out where he is. Right now the Grunts will appear and as soon as the Grunts are there you get curious as the Yugo player. Is there the Blade Master? So far there is no Blade Master here. He's attacking the Grunts. Stop, stop the creeping for a second. And now goes to finish the Augur Warrior here. Blade Master will hit him. 
Right now, it's still healing up. Got the Ring of Regeneration from Creeping the Ogre Maggie early on. Uh, Archmage goes into that. Get the Boots of Speed as well as the Dust. This is also important. Get the Boots of Speed as soon as you can and also get the Dust of Appearance. And right now, we've seen he crept both of the Ogre, Ogre Warriors here, which is good to have the experience from them. He also crept the Green Camp and the Green Camp in front of the base. So the two Green Camps added up to full level 2. The third green camp with the militia get, it got him some additional experience, and with the two auger warriors and the militia support and the footman that he's sending there right now, because he knows that the uh, blade master is chasing his archmage, so he knows that there will be no jacking, no creep jacking here, and for not starting with this, so he on purpose he crept the green camp here on purpose, while a lot of human players would go for the orange one. He crept this one on purpose to leave this one behind, to fall back into this, with his militias and the forces that he sends there at the moment. The four footmen, five footmen that he got, no water elemental. Usually you want to send a water elemental there as well, but the amount of mana on the Archmage is already low, so there's no water elemental possible. But with the footmen and the few militias that he sends there, he should be completely fine. And this is like... Two moons of the of the time that we see, two moons in the night, and 50% of the tech, or about 50 to 60%, I would say. So sending out the militias there, two or four militias, together with the forces, because you know that the Blade Master will not creep check you there, because he's chasing your Archmage. It's a great opportunity, a great timing window to creep that and secure yourself the important, all important level three for your Archmage. We can see in the meantime, Infi is going for the main base of the Orc player. He could also, when he gets a water element, could also creep that, but the remaining forces of the Orc, together with the Blade Master, have to check this one out and see if there is some more creeping going on. So he's finishing the two Orc Warriors, and by finishing that and applying a little bit of pressure towards the Orc here, he will get the level 3 by finishing the first troll. Level 2, we can see it here in the main. Level 3 finally done, and as soon as you have that, you just keep the forest troll alive because you don't need any more experience points. After that, you can easily summon the first water elemental, but Infi, doing it smart, not summoning the water elemental, we can just point it out a little bit. He was in the main base, he could have used the level 2 water elemental to maybe try and cancel the orc world. But one or more water elemental level 2, it is strong, but it is not strong enough to accomplish all too much here. Especially when the Blade Master is on the tip of your toe and is chasing you through the map. And he was at the main base with one of his grunts. So the level 2 water elemental would be completely wasted by using it there. So he keeps his mana pool up for two water elementals that he can summon when the cooldown wears off. And just got enough mana because he also knows that his tech is about to be done and there will be a Beastmaster. So with the mana pool available, you have two possible water elementals. Beastmaster also soon enough and we see at the amount of lumber that he got. With the militia creeping, the amount of lumber decreases slightly because you use your militias instead of getting more lumber. But it should still be fine for one Arcan Sanctum and the Beastmaster, as well as getting the lumber, enough lumber for the second one. So we will check how this continues. Archmage retreats here from the Blade Master. He's still level 1 because he wanted to chase the Archmage heavily and apply a lot of pressure early on. But Infi played this super well, killing off the Claws of Attack because he knows that his uh, Archmage will not be there any uh, anytime soon. Sending one of his Player footmen in the middle, but immediately sending his, uh, him back because he knows that he will die. Now he will construct an Arcan Vault because he wants to replenish all the stuff when he goes back. And now we see it. Beastmaster comes, he hits tier 2. When he hits tier 2 and he goes for the main base of the Orc, he's constructing an Arcan Sanctum in front of his base. Because the spot here is not free and as it seems he can construct the second one here. We will keep an eye on this later. Right now, he should be about to summon the first water element, first water element. The 300 mana on the Archmage, this is plenty of mana to play with. Quickly look in the main base, yeah, there's a space, he should have killed this tree here early on, so that he could construct the second Archim Sanctum as well in his main base. So no Arcane Vault, I think he will definitely need one, but right now he's skipping it entirely to get both of the Arcane Sanctums. You want to construct them, them with two workers each. It's not super fast power building, but still power build. And with the two workers on each sanctum, they will line up perfectly. So let's see what the Archmage and the Beastmaster is up to. Summoning the first water elemental as well as the first full beast. Just running away. As soon as a Blade Master hits you, you have to run away with your Archmage. You can't go back there again. 
with the footman right now the beastmaster is chasing or uh, the blade master is chasing the beastmaster we see that water level and cool is, is checking the main base if there is any tier 2 buildings going down here that he could cancel or possibly cancel but there are no buildings being produced there's a warmer going down as well as a beast jerry finally and let's see, the human player summons the second water elemental as well as the second cool beast. There it is. The first cool beast is here still in the main base. So he got two water elements and one quill beast. In the main base, in the meantime, he constructed both of his Aiken Sanctum. And because he got no shop at the moment and he's supply blocked, he has to build this here and power build the next farm. You should have 42, uh, the possibility of 42 supply at the moment. So five farms. You need five farms for that. Should have built the fifth farm earlier. And because of the lag for the Arcane Vault, he decides to go with Priest first to heal up his remaining forces in the main base. While he's doing that, producing that on the hotkeyed Sanctums, he's trying to hit the uh, blade master here because he knows that the base layout is not really allowing him to apply a lot of pressure to that but still he got the map control he got three war time elementals for a second right now he's down to two again shadow hunter is about to pop out and as soon as the shadow hunter is on the field it gets a little bit dicey for your archmage so you have to retreat with your archmage we see nice blocking coming out of the beast master here towards the shadow hunter I think the human player if he will have to use his town portal here if he wants to keep the first hero alive and there you go town portal in the meantime while the Archmage got chased and the army is a little bit out of position in the middle of the map he sends his remaining forces to the main base of fly to apply more pressure with the two water elementals and the two quill beasts in the main base you can see the priest that he got earlier he will get like two more priests as we can see so he will have three uh, priests in total in the main base healed up two of the um, really low HP footmen and they will heal up the other footmen as well as the Archmage who is town portaling in at the moment so the lack of a shop is not that crucial if you have the priest in place to heal you nice block here from Fly blocking the peons so that the Beastmaster cannot get into the main base and try to deny the Spirit Lodge there so here he goes for the Borrow I think he will not really kill that one but if you attack the Borrow and your opponent has to repair that He's not getting lumber, he's not using the pigeons for anything else, so keeping them there and applying a little bit of pressure to it that is definitely fine. But for doing that he will also lose his footmen, so I'm not sure if I should recommend this to you. I think footmen are crucial, so don't apply pressure and just maybe retreat. So after retreating, he is pulling all the militia that he got on wood. He got 350 wood at the moment. No Arcan Vault. Usually you want to have the human shop in place to get the ivory towers. And with the ivory towers you have the opportunity to just play three towers there in no time. So he's doing this a little bit differently. A slight adjustment. Calling all the militias with full HP. This is like three footmen in total. Archmage level 3. Beastmaster level 1. And because there is no Arcan Vault he can also not buy Clarity Potions. Clarity Potions would be perfect to replenish the mana here on the Archmage and give him more water elementals to play with. We see two sorcerers, two, no, three priests, two sorcerers, and now he decides to, I will just go and hit you right there. With the footman and the cool beast, he kept the orc player also in his base, so he was not able to creep anything back to get the shadow hunter up to level 2. The blade master will scout the push coming. But there's not too much that you can do about it. You can see the Shadow Hunter will try to creep that one because he really needs the experience. We see the dust that he bought earlier. He will need it for this push here so that you can reveal the Blade Master and hit him as hard as you can. The Orc player is getting the Kodo Beast, the Spirit Walker, as well as the Head Hunter against the Tower Rush. And right now we can see it. One Water Elemental, one Quill Beast with the Clarity Potion. You should have more stuff here. But without the Clarity Potions, it will look like that. You have the three priests healing up everything. In the meantime, you have to produce more and more sorcerers. You can see he's producing more sorcerers. It's going up to to 47 supply at the moment. And he will just go for full sorcerers here because he got the amount of priests that he needs. Three is totally fine right now. So we will quickly, one second, quickly go into the position of Infi here in this fight and see what he's up to. You can see he's microing his castles away as soon as he casts it slow on everything. In the meantime, he's constructing his towers in a really good position. You can see the lack of a borrow here, so the towers here cannot be hit by these borrows. So just constructing the towers there is really, really smart. 
They are close enough to hit crucial buildings, they are close enough to hit the stronghold, hit the altar of storms, and some of the towers will be able to hit the beastery as well as the barracks when they are finished. So constructing three towers there, or even four towers, transforming them as soon as you can to guard towers, and also set the auto repair on the peasants so that whenever the towers get hit, the, re the peasants will auto repair the towers. As soon as the towers are done, we have the scenario, uh, though this is a uh, scenario that we are looking forward right now. We got the towers done. The peasants don't have a job right now, so you can just use attack move and put the auto repair on them. So whenever they have to repair something, they will repair it, but in the meantime, they will attack the, pe uh, the orc units here. And for that, it's pretty good. We can see they are soaking up damage, blocking out the spaces. We can see also that Infi is fighting into um, fighting into Fly here and Fly. All of the units of Fly are already dropping low. There's no healing wave for the for the Shadowhunter so far. Oh, nice scroll here as well as a potion on the blade. Must the towers being cancelled? You have to reproduce them as soon as they got cancelled. You can see that the amount of wood right now is not that great. For that reason, we will pause one more time. He left the one peasant here or two peasants that are actually here on the lumber part. I think you, if you don't have the amount of lumber that you need for that, maybe you should leave a few more behind or just reconstruct a few in, the, in your town home. So he will be able to get one or two towers up. But if he is constructing one more scout tower, which costs 20, go uh, 20 wood, and the upgrade, which is 50 wood again, he loses 70 wood and he will be really, really limited in wood. But on the other hand, we can see all the remaining forces here are super low HP. The Shadow Hunter is still level 1, so we will continue the fight here. With the sorcerers, after using the slow, you can just attack. You can see he's using all the sorcerers at once with the priest to attack the grunts because they have heavy armor and they take additional damage from the magic. So attacking with all your forces is always a great deal. Especially you can also attack only with your sorcerers, and in the meantime the priest will heal you up. One tower finally finished. He's still repairing the second one. Pressure being applied towards the beastmaster here. Uh, the blade master is still low. Wow, the priest still stays alive, he's microing him back so that he will be healed up. Plenty of sorcerers, you can see it. In the meantime, he was only constructing sorcerers. Now he got a crucial amount of sorcerers and he will go back into priest again. So, this tower is in a really good spot. On the one side, he's covered by the forest. On the other side, he can be like completely surrounded by workers. And we had a few more towers lining up, so this is a really good spot. As well as the next two towers that follow up. You can see the borough is totally out of range. This borough placement is really bad. You cannot hit these towers, but if these towers will ever make it up, they can hit the gold line. And hitting the gold line with your towers, as well as hitting the stronghold, is like really, really, really good. Like this is what you want. The towers either should apply a lot of pressure towards the barracks so that he's not able to get the catapults out, or they should be able to hit the stronghold as well as the gold line. And with this base layout, Hitting the gold line with this tower here in position will be a great deal. So for that reason we will continue the replay here, see what the human player is up to. He's cancelling the healing stuff again. There is no more dust, so maybe the magic sentry for the towers would be a great upgrade. But you can see the castles are really strong with the magic armor. There were magic attack missiles against the orc boroughs. They have heavy armor, they also take additional damage from that. So killing off the borough. One sec, we will change the change the view position right there we see 42 supply out of 50 so by killing off their borrow you limit the production of the orc player heavily he will not be able to get any more units out if he's not replacing the borrow so apply, applying pressure to the borrow whenever you are not dealing with the orc army is definitely the right call here so whenever you produce the towers and you are not dealing with the army here because he, there's not too much army left you can easily try and snipe one of one or two out of uh, from the one or two boroughs here to limit his production even further so let's see how this continues blade masters finally level three we see the first dispel going down but the blade masters in deep red hp here 100 hp but he got healing waves shadow hunter finally level two Beastmaster still level 1, Archmage still level 3. The amount of wood is really not that great for the human player, so he's not able to upgrade all the towers. In the meantime, he was able to finish the second tower here. So two towers, the first catapult will be ready soon. He is dropping, about to drop out of the barracks. 
and he spawns in a really safe location. Whenever he spawns here, Dar instantly slow him and try to snipe it down. Getting rid of, rid of the dem demolishers is just as important as killing the Boros. So always try to snipe that when he's like out of position. Right now you cannot really dive into that because there's still one end snare left. The Boros do some really good damage against the uh, castles especially. We can see that the second tower is finally being upgraded. One of the priests is being ensnared and hit by the catapult, but in the meantime the towers are hitting the stronghold already. And now he's assigning the other towers to the beast already because he wants to kill the tech buildings from the orc here so that there are no more raiders. You can always fall back into the towers, don't fight with uh don't fight when you are not in the range of the towers, always fall safely back into that second catapult. It's getting a little bit crucial here for Infi. I will pause for a second as well. His Beastmaster is dropping fairly low. There's still ends now on the one raider. He used it on this priest, but if he's using it on the on the Beastmaster, he could instantly fall. But we can see that Infi was sitting on a really nice 48 or 47 supply and he got all the castles that he needed. So in the meantime, he upgraded the Adept training for the Sorceress so that he is able to save his heroes when there is hero focus. And I think Fly and all the orc players will try to snipe your heroes whenever they are a little bit out of position, especially if you don't have a TP anymore on your Archmage. And we saw that he lost that early on. So having this invisibility available for you to keep your heroes alive will be really crucial. You can even just um, stop auto attack on one of the source, the auto cast for slow, just so you have invest available all the time. So fighting against two catapults is always like scary here. And sometimes you feel like, okay, this is slipping a little bit out of hand. But at the moment, or oh, Ahmed a little bit off position, getting ensnared immediately. You can see the Invis is saving him in this at this point. Also see the Beastmaster is super low. Catapults are killing your units. The Boros do so much damage to the Sorcerers, but there are still three Priests healing it up. We can look in the main base. More Priests being lined up, as well as the Arcane Bolt to fall back into Spellbreaker production later on. So, two catapults can definitely deal with your towers, but the towers are already hitting the gold line, and you can see how crucial that is. As soon as the peons die in the gold line, you're just losing resources like heavily. So, repairing your towers, stay there as long as possible. There's no real retreat path for Infi at the moment. He's just casting Invis on, his, on both of his heroes and positioning himself really smart. We can see almost five towers, this tower is about to be finished, five towers that he can fall back into. The two catapults doing a good job, but he's still repairing the towers. And you cannot really get rid of the towers any, uh, of the catapults anymore, because you don't want to go into the bowers and into the raiders, as well as into the orc army at all. So for that reason he just decides to kill the beastery, locate himself right to his towers, though whenever he fights into that he has to fight against the towers, and kill the gold line off so that the resources that the orc player got are limited. In the meantime he constructed the arcane world, he got 700 resources to spend, and we will see how this continues here. So a lot of towers in place, all the gold peons back in the borough, and right now you are in a really safe spot here with all the towers backing you up. You can just easily snipe the orc borough here. The catapults still, don't get me wrong, still do a lot of damage. But I think by losing this borough, he just lost the opportunity to ever mine gold again for the duration that the towers are up there. So Fly is committing to the towers, he really wants to get rid of them. I think the magic upgrade to see him when he goes into Invis will be great. Two priests caught out of position, the re um, new, new forces that wanted to join the army here. But he cannot fight into five towers, so the guard towers are in a really safe spot. We can see he's casting Invis whenever his heroes are in danger. And after all, even though he got two, two, uh, two catapults to deal with the towers, he's not really able to do that. Because the peasant repaired it for, for long enough, the peons on the gold line are dying to the tower here, the stronghold is dropping low, and overall this is a really really bad spot for Fly to be in. The execution of Infi was just amazing, the Invis saves on his heroes, the tower position here were really good, he's bringing the first spellbreakers into his army, and you can see the stronghold has to be repaired. The gold line is attacked by the towers, he already lost a couple of peons here, you can see the corpse on the ground, and he still falls back into the towers though, that Fly is not able to deal with that. 
Bam, one tower falls finally, another healing the wave is being casted onto the Blade Master. But you can see that he is not able to get any more gold. He's sitting on 80 gold and 653 wood. He has to repair his main hall. Right now he's completely out of wood, out of resources. The tower are just in an amazing position and the game is over. So guys, this is the guide for the sky push on Turtle Rock with a really nice creep route that you could easily copy from Infi. And the execution and the tower placement is super crucial in here. So I hope you enjoy the guide. Leave me some feedback if you enjoyed it. Let me also know what you think about the whole thing. If the tower rush is like imbalanced, if Orc has a big disadvantage, or if Fly just did some amazing mistakes. Here I was not really talking about what Fly has to do. I just talked about what the human player in general and the role of Infi has to do in order to succeed this push. And I hope you learned a few lessons there. So let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the guide and be there for the next guide. So guys, see you soon and bye bye.